Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over um, electric potential. So in the last video, we just reviewed redox reactions, which basically that's the heart of electrochemistry. Now we're going to talk about what an electric potential is. So if I were to take a metal, a strip of metal, and place it into a solution of its own ions, I set up an equilibrium system, basically. So I can take, I don't know, a piece of gold. And I can put it into a beaker of its own um, ions. So I have a piece of gold, which has no oxidation number, or an oxidation number of zero, rather. And I put it into a solution of gold ions. Well, what ends up happening is they'll go back and forth. They'll go back and forth between being just solid gold and an ion. So if I were to take a reactive metal, well, reactive metals tend to want to lose their electrons very readily. So magnesium, anything that's in group one or group two, those are usually very reactive metals. Those metals want to lose their electrons. So if I were to place um, a strip of magnesium into magnesium ions, it'll go back and forth. Well, because magnesium wants to lose electrons more readily, we're going to have more on the reactant side of this particular reaction. So if I were to um, look at which one is going to be greater, it would be the reactant side. The reactant side would be more favored here. Now if I take a less reactive metal, less reactive metals want to lose electrons uh, very, very little. So if I'm looking at this reaction with silver, silver um, does not want to lose its electrons very readily. So we're going to have more on the product side. So it will be a product favored reaction here. Now we can also see this with some nonmetals like hydrogen gas and uh, some of the halogens as well. Okay, so whenever you have this situation where you take a metal and you place it into a solution of its own ions, um, an electric charge builds up. Well, that electric charge is called the electric potential. And that system that you've set up, where you've got a metal with a solution of its own ions, that's called a half cell. Well, the sign and the size of that charge depends on that substance's to, uh, ability to lose or gain electrons. So that number will be higher or greater based on how reactive that substance is, or how likely it is to undergo reduction. Okay, so we actually have a list of all of these electric potentials. So we have a list of almost, almost all of the metals, and we have measured this electric potential, and we've measured this electric potential. Well, the way that we do this is we set up two half cells and we connect them together. So I will have some half cell with whatever metal it is that I'm testing and then I'll have another half cell set up with hydrogen. It's always tested against hydrogen. So inside um, this, hydrogen's a non-metal and it's a gas. So what we have to do is we have to have a tube of hydrogen gas and then we, uh, we place a metal, a very inert metal, so a very non-reactive metal like platinum inside that tube. Well, inside your vial right here, we'll have the hydrogen ion, so we'll have some acid. And we're going to connect these two half cells together. We're going to use a high resistance voltmeter. So basically, we connect it together with a wire, and we're going to use uh, something that measures the voltage or the electric potential. And it, we say it's a high resistance one, so that basically it doesn't interfere with the reaction at all. Um, so you're going to connect these two half cells together. We also connect it together with a salt bridge, which we're going to talk more about later. And that potential is measured with this voltmeter. Well, we always measure it with the hydrogen cell because the hydrogen cell is set at zero. And we will always have certain conditions. So anytime you see this little zero knot thing right here, this means that it's under standard conditions. So in this case, it'll be one atmosphere of pressure. So we have a gas here, so it's one atmosphere of pressure. We always have one mole per liter for our solutions in both the vials. And we also have it at set at 298 Kelvin. So these are the standard conditions, and this is how 
the electric potential is measured. We put these two half cells together and we connect them. And then in between the connection, you've got a voltmeter which measures that voltage. Well, this is a list um, of our electric potentials. But now, when we look at this list, if we look at it, we've got electrons that are being added. So it's a reduction electrode potential list. Okay, and all of these are measured against hydrogen, which is set at zero. But if you notice, at the top of the list, you've got a very positive number. At the bottom of the list, you've got a negative number. Well, these substances are very likely to gain electrons. So the more positive the number, the more likely it is to gain electrons or be reduced. At the bottom, you have very negative numbers or more negative numbers. And those substances are very likely to not gain electrons, but lose them. So the more negative the number, the more likely it is to gain, or not gain electrons, but to lose them. And then if you're at the top of the list, you're more likely to gain the electrons. And if you notice, this is actually the opposite of your activity series. Lithium is at the top of the activity series. It's a very reactive metal. It likes to lose electrons. So whenever we look at this, we need to keep this in mind. This is for reduction, not oxidation. And oxidation, remember, is the loss of electrons. Okay, so we're when we look at these electric potential values, these are the reduction electrode potential. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, so the value is determined by how likely the substance is to gain electrons. So they're gaining electrons when we look at this reduction electrode potential. The more positive the number, the more likely it is to gain electrons. The more negative, the more likely it is to lose the electrons. So if it's higher on the list, it's going to gain electrons easily. Um, the number is going to be more po positive and these things are easily reduced. These are the best oxidizing agents. So if I look at this list right here, fluorine is one of the best oxidizing agents. Okay, now if it's lower on the list, those things lose electrons very easily. Um, and the value of the E will be negative. Those are things that are easily oxidized because they lose the electrons very easily. These are also the best reducing agents. So if I go back to my list, lithium would be my best reducing agent here. Okay, So fluorine would be my best oxidizing agent. Lithium would be my best reducing agent.